Are you tired of all your charts and power apps looking meh at best, right? Not very flexible, very difficult to deal with, right? The chart control is not ideal. So look over here on my desktop. We've got some really cool stuff now. So what we're going to do, look, there's a pie chart. Oh, what? You want to have a, a lollipop chart? I don't know what that is. We'll say generate. And just a moment later, we have a lollipop chart. Oh, what? That's not fancy enough for you. It was area charts. Let's generate one of those and look at that, right? All of a sudden, we have the ability to create all these charts. You're like, well, Shane, how are you doing that? Like, that's that's a lot. It is. And so what we're doing is we're using AI prompts. AI prompts now have the ability to generate code and generating that code can generate a image of a chart and that image of a chart, I'm going to show you how to pull over into Power App. So we made the whole thing dynamic. So we're going to show you some simple examples. I'll give you an overview of how this hard one works and hopefully inspire you to build better things. If that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. While this one was super fancy, it had the ability to select different users, right? Make the data dynamic, the chart type dynamic, and then generate it. It's got a lot of moving parts to begin with. So let's start with a little bit of a more simple example. And over here on screen one, I built a bar chart and a line chart, and each one of these is a little bit more static. So the key to all these is that we need to create an AI prompt. And so for example, this generate bar, if we look, this is actually an HTML text control, and it is just displaying an image. And what's happening is the AI prompt is generating the base 64 of that image. So this picture is being generated by an AI prompt and then being inserted, and then Power Apps knows how to render a picture. So that's all Power Apps is doing is rendering a picture, really. Now, if we go down here to generate bar, this is how we populate that variable. So we are running an AI prompt called bar graph SharePoint dot predict, right? So the kind of same way we do flow dot run, mm -hmm. we do AI prompt dot predict. And then everything in here is the, the smarts to take a filtered employees, right? Remember, we have these really nested things kind of read inside out. So say my employees list, it's filtering it where department equals executive. So that returns the four executives. Then what we're saying is, hey, only show columns, first name and hourly wage, because those are the only two columns I'm going to build my chart on. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the data payload as small as possible, right? The amount of data you can pass between Power Apps and AI prompts back and forth can be limited. So I'm trying to send it just as little as possible. That is also the key to success with AI anything, right? Is give it all the context it needs, but don't give it a bunch of extra things, right? Don't give it the 40 fields that came back with this because they're just going to confuse it when we know just those two fields are what my chart will be built on. So then that gets it down to just those two. And then I'm using the JSON function that takes that Power Apps table of those four records and JSON encodes it, right? Puts the curly brackets around it, all those colons and quotes and you don't really care, but it is making the data in a format that we can pass over. We use that same trick when we do things like generate a CSV file from Power Apps or upload it to Excel, right? We want to get it into a JSON format. So that keeps the JSON. And if you want to see that JSON, which I think can be helpful, is I'm going to copy what's right there. We're going to make ourselves a new screen, blank, insert a button, right? You can't put the JSON function right inside of a label like uh, other functions. So you can't see it directly. You have to put a variable first. So we're just going to say set var demo in that same code, press the button, boop. And then now if we insert a label, you can go here and then we'll kind of make it real big. And then we'll say, hey, um, instead of being the text, I want you to be var demo. And so there you can see the whole ta table, right? You got the square bracket and then a record for Nicola, comma, a record for Shane, comma, a record for Jennifer, comma, Sarah, comma, and then the closed square bracket. So that's what we're sending to the AI prompt. Okay, so we're all on the same page. Now, if we go look at the AI prompt over here, bar graph SharePoint, all it says is, look, take the following table and turn it into a bar graph. Use modern feel, feeling. Yeah, I did that right. Feeling. <laughs> Those words are hard. Color scheme. Um, and then return only the base 64 for the image of the bar graph and nothing else. Ugh, I already published this video and realized I didn't do something. So in order for this new feature to work, you need to hit the ellipses here and then go to settings. And down here at the bottom, you have to enable code interpreter, right? This has to be enabled. If it is here disabled, but grayed out, and it won't let you click enabled. Then you need to talk to your administrator who needs to go in at the M365 level and enable this under the settings for Copilot features. But this has to be here for this to work. I forgot about it, right? This is actually a newer feature that just rolled out. So anyway, sorry about that. Back to the video.
So this was handy in my testing, right? I put this in this label, kind of know that's the data. We could copy it and we could go over here and then we could paste that in as sample data so we could do test over here. And so if we hit test, what we should get after like two or three seconds, all right, more like 12 seconds. Sometimes it runs a little slower. That's okay, we're not gonna judge. But you see it starts with IVBOR, right? That That's base64 file basically. It's like, hey, it's gonna be a base64 file and all that. If you're not familiar with base64 files, you wanna learn more about those, I'll put a link up there for you. But that is an image. That is the A's and the B's, the ones and zeros that makes up an image that we can use over in Power Apps. But I kept doing this so I could play with it. Also, if you're like, hey, you know, I wanna be able to see this better. If you remove this line, right? So Control X and do another test, da -da, right? You can see what it's generating. So this makes your testing faster. Once you come over here, right? You've put the table data in and then you keep working on your prompt until you get it to be outputting what you want. And then you add in something like this because you only want the base 64 of the image over there so we can display it. But by taking that line out, it let us quickly or more quickly iterate over here in our testing cycle, okay? So once you're happy with that, you could hit save and send it over. So we'll get rid of that one. Now, I also here, if we go back, we had one for Dataverse, same HTML control, same setup. Um, and I've been doing this with 600 because the width that gets returned has kind of been varying. And so then that way I don't get scroll bars. Uh, so if you're seeing scroll bars in your HTML controls, it's because your file is either too tall or too uh, wide based on what it is, but you can just change the HTML to control that. Anyway, so this generate um, button here is very similar. In the case of the Dataverse example though, I really am just sending over the color, right? So predict green. And so if we go look at that one, what I did, line chart Dataverse, and so this one, I used AI prompt knowledge, right? Create a line chart plotting employee's hourly wage by employee's first name. Return only the base 64, nothing else. Use this theme for the color, theme color, right? And if you look here, these are both filtered to executive. So down here under add content, what I did was I chose knowledge and then I chose my Dataverse table, right? Dataverse is the only data source that you have this ability to use this knowledge and AI prompts with today. But if you are doing Dataverse, it could be a different way to tackle the same problem. That's why I did the SharePoint example first. I think a lot of you are more in that other data source realm today. And so then there, right, we're doing all the filtering work over in Power Apps and just passing the table. Here, we're letting Dataverse do that work for us. Okay, but so same thing, just a little bit different prompt. Okay, so then last but not least, you want to talk about this fancy one, right? Okay, so the fancy one, what we did over here is I first just have a gallery of my employees. It is set up to be filtered, right? They can filter it to say, hey, only show me the executives here, right? It would filter it down. And then we have a select all, deselect all, or you could select just to do those two people. So these are techniques around selecting records. I guess I'll put a link to that video. I wasn't planning on, but I will now. Um, right, so that's just normal gallery stuff. It has nothing to do with AI, nothing. Those are not new skills. Those are just filtering and working with uh, a gallery. So we got that. For the chart types, this is just a list of um, table or different types of charts, right? Bar, column, line, area, right? All the ones I want available in this dropdown. So it's just a regular dropdown with that stuff. And so then finally we have our generate button. Now it looks a little scary, but really it's very, very, very similar, right? So if we kind of look at, all right, so set variable, dynamic chart predict, and then we know that all of this is just that JSON encoding. So then we kind of look at it inside out, right? So we start with all the items in gallery. We find the ones that are filtered by the checkboxes, so Nicola and Jennifer. We add a column called favorite color uh, and take it on favorite color value. So favorite color is a choice column in my data type. I can't pass a choice without confusing the AI prompt. So I'm just generating a choice column on, or a, a text column that has their favorite color, red, green, blue, on the fly. So I'm using uh, that, adding a column for that. I am then also adding a column for higher date. So hi higher date had uh, the date and the time and all that in there. I didn't want all that. So I cleaned it up and just used the text formatter to make it only a short date. So then we're gonna say only show columns, the uh, first name and hourly wage. Oh, no, we're showing more than that, I forgot. First name, hourly wage, department, 
Our new favorite color, right? That's that favorite underscore color. Our new hire date, hire underscore data, right? So I didn't use the existing ones. I had to use those. Age, good at their job. So once again, all of that generates some JSON. It's very similar. It's slightly more complicated, right? So copy. We'll go back over here to that little test screen real quick. Um, we'll change this button to say, hey, here's some different JSON, buddy. Let me close that, close that. Oh, one more. Press the button. Oh, and now you can see what came back, but in reality, nothing came back because nothing's checked on gallery all items. Oops, let's go back over here. Let's check Nicola, Shane, and Chewy. Now over here, now press the button. And there you go. So same type of stuff, just more columns information. And so now that we have more columns information, if we go look at the last prompt, dynamic charts, hey, does all this AI stuff have you interested, but you're really struggling on where and how to get it going? We just created a new offering called AI in a Week, where we will go through, we will give you some training on AI. We will then help you discuss different possibilities for incorporating it. And then we will build your first project for you, right? Whether it's an agent, adding AI to Power Apps or Power Automates, get it going, and then help you deploy that and get that enhanced, right? Not, not some big crazy project, just a quick win, right? Think something we can do in literally inside the scope of a week. Maybe we stretch it longer than a week, but but that's the idea, right? Like five, five different little engagements, five little pieces. So if you need more information on that, uh, check out the link below and back to the video. So this one, the instructions are very detailed. I'm not gonna go through all of these. I'm gonna tell you right now, I used a large language model, Copilot, ChatGPT, Claw, Gemini, it doesn't matter. I used one of them and said, hey, help me build out um, this prompt, right? So take the following table, that JSON, of employee data and create a chart type, right? Over here, when we press this button for generate, right, we're sending that name of the chart type. So if right now it'd be sending the word area. So create a area chart image. Data columns that may be present. So I was painting a picture of what I may or may not be sending it. I wasn't sure. In hindsight, I ended up sending it all, but at one point I was gonna make it completely like you didn't even have to send them all, but I ended up sending them all. Mapping rules, apply those. Uh, so for each different chart type, I told it how to handle that incoming data to make the chart I wanted. And then if we scroll down here, styling, use modern accessible palettes, right? Uh, if favorite color is present and is valid color, prefer it as a person's element, eh, cool. Title the chart this, X, Y, data labels. And then important, return only the base 64. No markdown, no JSON, no nothing. And as you can imagine, this, same thing, image, boom, boom, boom. I set both the width and the height on this one because these different chart types, right? Different charts seem to come back in different um, sizes altogether. So I had to kind of be more, more accommodating before I was letting it be flexible. I kind of kept having issues. So that's why I said all those specified. That's pretty cool, right? Using AI. I can tell you one of the things that we are playing with, we've not got working well enough for the video, uh, was maybe even using, having it generate 3D models of these charts and then using the Power Apps 3D model, right? The GLB files, I don't know, right? Like I, I got it quasi working. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do. So if you're not incorporating AI prompts into your Power Apps today, you are missing out. There is so much power here that unlocks, that makes your Power Apps better and let you check the box that yes, boss, we've added some AI into our IT systems. So questions, comments, thoughts, leave them below. Remember, we can help you. I've got that whole week long um, AI get you up and running. We've done private training, public training. We got consulting projects, we got mentoring. We got all the things if you're trying to incorporate this or anything with your Power Platform or Copilot Studio. And with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.